Hey friend, welcome back to the Vision Driven Health Podcast, your go-to place for healthy habits that last for Christian women. I am doing this episode specifically because in multiple situations in the last couple of weeks, it's been pointed out to me how quote unquote strange my dessert eating habits are. After getting the reactions that I did, I realized two things. One, what I do isn't normal. And two, that I need to do a podcast episode for you explaining how I have dessert nearly every night while having maintained a healthy weight for over 10 years. So without further ado, let me explain exactly how I do this and what sweets I'm having nearly every night. Do you find yourself struggling to consistently implement healthy habits? Do you lack energy, confidence, and motivation because of stress, overwhelm, and shame for having not gotten it together by now? Friend, there is hope and grace for your health. Hey, I'm Robin Ryan McDonald, host of the Vision Driven Health Podcast. I'm a follower of Jesus, a wife, a mama of two, and a seminarian turned health coach. And I'm so excited that you're here. I found myself in my early 20s captive to cravings and convenience, 20 pounds heavier, super tired, with a face full of acne. I could not figure out how to maintain healthy habits until I discovered the power of aligning my choices with God's vision. 10 years and two kids later, by the grace of God, I'm still prioritizing my health and feeling amazing. If you are over quick fixes and are ready to feel good in your own skin, then grab a giant water bottle and let's dive on in. As a reminder, the Vision Driven Health Podcast is under the umbrella of Mabel Health Incorporated. The content on this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended for medical advice. It does not take the place of medical advice or treatment from a physician. Listeners should consult their own doctor or a qualified healthcare professional for specific health concerns and questions. Recently, I've been telling everyone how great my favorite show is. It feels like I can't help but bring it up in conversation. You know how that is when you've found something you love and you just know it could bless the person you're telling? Friend, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't invite you to join me in the Healthy Weight Loss Academy. If you found yourself caught in this cycle of dieting and yo-yoing with your weight, and you're at the point where you're feeling discouraged and hopeless, or if you're just ready to make changes, but you're also overwhelmed at the thought of trying to implement something new, if you're tired of feeling tired, and you want an approach to weight loss that benefits your lifelong health, then you'll want to take advantage of the 20% off flash sale happening this Wednesday on Valentine's Day for the Healthy Weight Loss Academy. Go to visiondrivenhealth.com forward slash course to sign up. A couple of weeks ago, I was hosting a dear friend and after dinner, I asked her if she wanted dessert. She got excited and said, sure. And I opened up my freezer and pulled out a container with Christmas cookies from this past holiday season. (laughs) She was like, you still have Christmas cookies? And I was like, yeah, I love getting to have them weeks later. Then this past week, my mom was over and she had given me and Ryan three pieces of homemade pie from the weekend prior. One was banana cream and two apple pie slices. And they were amazing. (laughs) She saw me pull out the container with the pie and looked at me with surprise. She's like, you still have pie? And I was like, yeah, I really like having a little bit each night. (laughs) So then I was telling a friend about these instances and she was like, yeah, that's not normal. (laughs) So all that to say, I realized that this was something I've done for so long that I honestly hadn't thought of it as strange or uncommon. So I'm obviously doing this episode to give you insight into my mind and my approach. However, to best set you up to have dessert every night while maintaining or losing weight, I do want to address the biological dynamics that can lead to sugar cravings. 
Now, I'm fully aware that a lot of evening sweet treats and desserts are a result of emotional eating. I'm actually going to be delving into that deeper next week, so stay tuned for that. Today, I want to address things biologically, though emotions are biological, but hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say here, Uh, and just practically. So one of the primary reasons you experience sugar cravings is because you are deficient in a specific nutrient. Specifically, if you find yourself craving chocolate, it could be due to a magnesium deficiency. Magnesium deficiencies are actually quite common these days, and 70 to 85% dark chocolate actually has 64 milligrams of magnesium per ounce in it. Depending on your size and magnesium needs, that's a significant somewhere between 20 to 35% of your daily need for magnesium. With Valentine's on the horizon, hearing that, it'd be easy to justify eating tons of chocolate hearts in the name of fulfilling your potential deficiency. (laughs) But before you play on that, stick with me for a little bit longer. (laughs) Because we know cravings aren't always just chocolate. Most of us are down for any sweet that'll satisfy our craving, particularly at the end of a hard day. Because of that, it might not even be magnesium that you're deficient in. It could be other vitamins or minerals or nutrients you just haven't been getting enough of. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you've probably heard me beat the drum about how important it is to eat enough food. When you are under eating, you aren't just cutting calories, you are cutting nutrients. When you aren't getting all the nutrients your body needs to function the way it's supposed to, then your body will begin to try and get your attention to fill the gap where you're deficient through cravings. The problem is that a sweet craving might be intended to get you to consume nutrient-packed berries or citrus, but instead we turn to processed alternatives. And it might sound counterintuitive, but it can actually help you eat cleaner and less food overall when you eat more food. And let me explain why. Because if eating too little causes you to then have cravings that you then fulfill in excess or in binging, You're not actually eating as few calories as you think you are. And now, instead of having a higher amount of calories in a variety of healthy foods that's benefiting your body, you're having a higher amount of calories in sugary processed foods. And I don't say this to shame anyone. It's actually (laughs) largely from experience that I share that because that's exactly what I used to do in college. I'd count my calories meticulously during the day. And then at night, I would eat a giant bag of yogurt covered raisins or almost the entire loaf of banana bread that I made for myself and like one or two other friends. And particularly the yogurt covered raisins, that was just an insane amount of sugar. And honestly, at the time, I didn't consider that I could eat more of the healthier food options and then actually reduce the urge I had to consume all that sugar at night. So when it comes to eating enough during the day, Make sure you're consuming protein at every meal. Make, you know, whether that's eggs for breakfast or you're having Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt in the morning or a protein smoothie or something protein in the morning. You've got some kind of meat for lunch, meat for dinner. Uh, Obviously there's other protein sources. The best option is meat and making sure that even your snacks are protein rich as well. Then you want to have at least three to four half cup servings of vegetables And again, this is kind of, this is a broad, rough generalization for portions and whatnot. You have to figure out what works best for you. But then you also want to make sure you're consuming a variety of complex carbon, healthy fat options. And if you're, if you want more details on what to eat or the the portions of what to eat, check out episodes 40, 42, and 43. Okay. Back to sugar cravings. Another big reason you have sugar cravings is because you're stressed which again, I'm going to go further into emotional eating next week, but obviously everything is connected, right? And so stress isn't just an emotional or mental dynamic. It's very much a physical dynamic as well, which again, I understand mental and emotional are physical as well, but you know what I mean? (laughs) So with that said, stress is arguably one of the biggest detriments to our health on a regular basis. When we are in a stress state, we cause our body to burn through more nutrients in order to handle that higher stress state, which then leads to a variety of health complications, including 
what we what I just mentioned about the nutrient deficiencies and cravings. Dealing with stress, though, begins in the mind. So again, stay tuned for next week. But then the last factor for sugar cravings that I want to address with you today is whether your diet is a blood sugar roller coaster or not. If you're consistently consuming a high glycemic diet, meaning you are eating foods that cause your blood sugar to spike, you consistently end up in a place where your body causes sugar cravings to then get you to eat carbs to increase your energy because you had the sugar crash because your blood sugar spiked. (laughs) High glycemic foods are foods like processed grains, think crackers, bread, pasta, cookies, pretzels, um, Other things include chips, sweet coffee drinks, sweetened yogurt. We think we're doing something healthy, but we get the sweetened yogurt with super sugary granola or granola bars or juices and things like that. All of those are very high in sugar and or they are very high glycemic that's going to cause your blood sugar to spike. If you focus on consuming primarily single ingredient whole foods like beef, chicken, pork, veggies, fruits, nuts, seeds you'll notice that you don't even have the same kinds of cravings that you used to. With that said, I do want to share with you more about my evening dessert routine, which might be why you tuned into this episode in the first place. But I wanted to share with you those factors for sugar cravings because even with what I'm about to share with you, if your body isn't getting the nutrients it needs, then you're going to still, you're going to have a harder time exercising discipline and control and intentionality with your choices because your body's literally screaming at you, Hey, eat the chocolate or Hey, you need more carbs because there are other deficiencies present. So with that said, check out those other episodes I mentioned, make sure you're eating enough, (laughs) make sure you're managing your stress. Stay tuned, stay tuned for next week's episode. (laughs) But as far as, as long as I can remember, not necessarily every night, but most nights I have had something sweet in the evening. And right now in the winter months, I guess, yeah, we're definitely still in the winter months. It's cold over here, in my opinion, in Southern California. I'm like, oh, it's in the fifties and it's been rainy. Wow. But right now I am very much in my bone broth, hot chocolate evening dessert routine. I've talked about this before, especially if you go back and listen to, I think it's episode 40, where I talk about protein. I go on like a long unplanned rant or not rant, just talk about how much I love my bone broth hot chocolate. But this drink is a great example of what I've done with other desserts to be able to have something like this at night because this bone broth hot chocolate is packed with protein and it's low glycemic. There's actually not that much sugar. The only sugar that I use in it is from maple syrup and it tastes like I'm getting to enjoy hot chocolate every night. And this is So this is the first hack for you when it comes to being able to have dessert every single night while still maintaining a healthy weight or losing weight is find whatever your favorite dessert thing is and make a healthy version of it. So if you really like to enjoy hot chocolate at night, make it yourself. It's so easy. Even if you didn't do the bone broth part, which I do highly recommend because there's there are so many benefits to bone broth. I make it myself. Yeah, I can, I won't go on another, (laughs) a whole nother side trail about it, but even if you just get organic milk and then you use cacao powder and you use maple syrup, you can make a really tasty hot chocolate that's way cleaner and lower glycemic and without the junk that is in like the packet that we get. Uh, Sometimes, you know, it takes some trial and error to make something that actually truly satisfies because I imagine some of you hearing that think, what? no, I want the real stuff or like, no, I could never be satisfied with, you know, whatever healthy version of it. But I got to tell you with enough practice, you usually can find something that you enjoy. And, and truly, I mean it. I am a foodie. I love sweets. I love good food. I'm, (laughs) I'm here to tell you there is hope. There is a way to find an option. But another part of that, that I've also experienced for myself is that as you eat cleaner, and choose less sugary foods, your taste buds change. So for me, if I actually try to have what I used to eat, gosh, if I were to try to eat even just a handful of yogurt covered raisins, I think I'd feel sick to my stomach. It honestly, just thinking about it right now makes me feel queasy. Um, it's just, it's too sweet. My taste buds have changed. That's not, I think what my body is accustomed to. And, and that's one of the cool things about your body is 
God designed our body to function well and to function healthily. And so when we give our body the inputs that it's designed to have, it then begins to course correct. And so if you feel like, oh, I'm, I've always, I always crave sugar and I'll always crave sugar. Well, unless you've consistently tried to implement whole food eating and been intentional with what you're eating over a certain period of time, if you have not done that, then it it would feel like you can't ever change. But I, again, I'm here to tell you, you can. That's how the body is designed. So, so now that so now you know that one, you can find a healthy alternative and two, your taste buds will come around to it as well. So they kind of, those two factors work together. The other thing that I do is I'm very intentional with my portions. It's not necessarily even that I calculated it out because I'm, I'm in a intuitive eating phase with my health right now. It's just that I've developed this inner measure of what's reasonable and where I'm at. And this is, this is actually something that I coach my clients on. They count macros for a period of time to learn what portions are while they're also becoming aware of how they feel and what their body needs. So then when we intentionally shift them into an intuitive eating phase, they have an established awareness of portions and how they affect their body. And then they are able to then develop an ability to measure portions more effectively without having to track and count and all those different things. So to give a few examples for me, and again, keep in mind, everyone's nutritional needs are different and metabolism does play a factor, which by the way, when you eat enough food, you actually increase your metabolism over time and your ability to consume more food while still losing weight or maintaining weight. Um, I, I actually love talking about that too, but I'm refraining from going down that rabbit trail. <laughs> so let's talk about those Christmas cookies that I had. They were not healthy other than they were made with organic ingredients and from scratch. So they weren't processed. They were homemade, but they still had a ton of sugar and they probably were still high glycemic. What I would do is I would eat two to three smaller ones, or I had one and maybe a small one or one and a half of one. And I gave myself permission to not have to have one of each. Or if I did really want to have one of each, I just took a piece of each. And I think for me, the biggest thing has been creating situations where I don't feel like I'm depriving myself. This is, I think if you get nothing else from what I'm sharing today on how to be able to have dessert every day and maintain a healthy weight is that you have to create the perspective that you are not depriving yourself. You're not restricting yourself. You're not, you're not doing something temporarily so that someday you can go all out again. It's really recognizing that this is a part of a lifestyle and that you truly can choose to eat whatever you want. I haven't ever declared that I'm not going to eat sweets or not to eat sweets at night or after a certain time. I just, I, I haven't decided that I can't have anything. And so if someone brings me a homemade banana bread fresh out of the oven, you best believe I'm going to eat it and probably on the spot because it's only warm for so long. (laughs) But I'll be mindful of the quantity. The other big thing that is so, so key to be able to do this without going overboard is to drop the all or nothing mentality. Don't fall for the trap. If you've had two cookies instead of one, that's okay. You don't have to have three more because you didn't stick to your original intention of just having the one. Remember your vision. You are eating dessert as a part of a healthy lifestyle, not in spite of it. And that is part of what you craft when you are intentional about creating a vision for your health and for your life. And that's another big component of my coaching and my courses is that I guide my clients through creating a vision which obviously this is the vision driven health podcast. I mentioned almost every single podcast, but you have clarity on how you can make choices aligned with that vision and a healthy relationship with dessert doesn't leave you feeling shame or like you're off track. It is enjoyable. It is freeing and friend, it is delicious. (laughs) So to summarize, make sure you are getting the nutrients you need to avoid sugar cravings. And when you do decide to have dessert, try to consume homemade healthy versions as much as you can. 
and create a relationship with your evening dessert that gives you permission to eat anything you want while keeping your vision at the forefront of your mind. I hope you found this helpful. Share your questions, thoughts, and takeaways in an email to me at visiondrivenhealth at gmail.com. And remember that in two days, there will be a 20% off flash sale for the Healthy Weight Loss Academy, where you will get more info like this, along with support, community, and resources to support you in healthy weight loss that lasts. I'll see you in there. Thank you so much for listening to the Vision Driven Health Podcast today. I hope this episode inspired you, supported you, and blessed you in some way. If it did, it would mean the world if you would leave a five-star written review on Apple Podcast and share this episode on your social media. The more reviews and shares this gets, the more people can be blessed and encouraged in creating a Jesus-centered, sustainable, healthy lifestyle. If you want to hang with me and other Jesus loving ladies who are creating healthy habits that last, be sure to join my free Facebook group, the made well mastermind. Use the link in the show notes to join, be blessed with hope, joy, and health. I'll see you next week.